Hello everyone, and good evening for me anyway. Um, I'm here to take you through the pairing system uh, for the ETC. So, because a lot of people have asked me over the last months, years, etc., how does pairing for a team tournament actually work, especially when it comes to uh, the ETC and the newly renamed XTC, uh, I thought I'd run you through the system itself visually, uh, because it's a lot easier to see with a visual aid, and to give you guys an idea of just how this is going to work, whether or not you're playing in the XTC or whether you just want to play along, watch and maybe borrow this pairing system for one of your game systems. Um, it's different from the system that is used for the um, UK TC, the UK team tournament that goes on, and there's more players per team. Uh, so it gets a bit more complex and it's almost like a mini game in itself. Uh, so let's get started and let me show you through it. So what we have here are some different cards. Uh, these represent the different players in blue team and red team. Uh, each of these players has their player number, one, two, three, four, five, and each of the players also has a faction, Imperial, Scum, Rebel Republic, or whatever, it doesn't matter. For the XTC, you can play any of the seven factions existing in the game, uh, but each player is only allowed to play one faction. Obviously, you're only allowed one of each faction in each team, so you can't have two rebels, two scum, for example. That leaves us with some interesting team choices in the first place. We have to decide uh, which is the strongest faction, or just what are our players best at flying, and how do we bring counters to the uh, other team's lists. Basing on this then, uh, let's jump into the pairing system. So, this pairing system revolves around attackers and defenders. Uh, the first stage is in secret. Each team has to select a defending player uh, to go up. So, we're going to say that both teams, um, they've, well, first they get to have a look at the opposition's list. They turn up or they've read before the tournament because you get to see uh, the opposite lists before the tournament. Uh, about three weeks, so most of the captains of the XCC will have considered and thought about the uh, pairing against most of their opponents uh, before the event. Um, but imagine that you walked up, you saw that your opponent had this list, you can see all their lists and everything, and you go, okay, I think that my Imperial player is best placed to take on all of these lists, so I'm going to put him up as a defender. Um, then the blue team might go, okay, well, most of my lists are okay, but one of them has some definite weaknesses, so I want to see if I can get him out of the way first, so I'm going to pick the resistance player in first for the blue team. Um, this would be done in secret. Uh, the red team and the blue team have no idea uh, which player their opponent is going to put up, and they do it at the same time, um, so you do this face down with the card, so neither of you has any idea which of you is going to be the defender. Um, once that happens, you reveal at the same time. So now both teams know that the red team has the Imperial player up as the defender and the blue team has the resistance player up as the defender. What the team's jobs now is uh, have to do, what the, what the teams have to do is they have to pick some uh, players to attack the defending player. So you get to pick two of your lists that could possibly play that defending list. Uh, so for example over here if you have a look the blue team's chosen the resistance defending list. Uh, now as the red team captain I might think that okay I know that my first order player has a hard counter to the resistance blue list and my republic player also has a pretty good chance playing against the uh, resistance list that has been put up as the defender there. Whereas the blue team might decide they're going to put their imperial squad and their scum squad in to attack the red uh, defending player. So now that's happened, again this is all done in secret, so you do not show your opponent what your decisions are being made. Your opponent has no idea who is being picked into what until those cards are revealed. So once again you pass the two cards face down over the table to your opponents, they pass their two cards over to you, and we have the attackers to go into the defenders. Those two lists have been selected that could possibly play against that defending list. Now it's back to the original team. Uh, so the red team that placed the Imperial player as the defender gets to see these two lists that go into it. He has a choice of either Imperial or Scum. And the entire team gets to decide, okay, which of these lists do we want to pair into our Imperial player? Um, the whole team decides, okay, 
we think the scum uh, the scum list is our best chance for a win against our imperial list so again in secret they put one list face down in the center of the table they pair up the imperial against the scum the resistant uh, the blue team will do the same thing they will pick the first order list into the resistance so first order and resistance get paired up we'll put that over there just to make it easy okay and now what you get is you get two leftover lists which get returned back to their respective teams so player four goes back to the red team player four goes back to the imperial team and we're left with two of our pairings so pairing number one the imperial player chose the scum player as his opponent and the resistance player chose the first order player as his opponent so we have two pairings out of our possible five now fully made um, once this is done obviously we have three players remaining in each team we go through the process again so this time the red team decides okay I'm gonna place the rebel player as my defending squad um, and the blue team says right we're gonna place the imperial player as our defending squad once again with much less choice because there's only two lists remaining the two lists get paired as attackers into the defending player so there we go the two blue remaining lists get paired in as attackers the two red remaining lists get paired as attackers and once again you go into this choosing system so you go away and in secret you decide right as red team who do I want to play and as blue team who do I want to play the important thing here as you'll see in a second is this decision this final decision has a lot more weight than the first decision the first decision paired up only two players and you only get to choose one pairing whereas here not only do you get to decide who goes into your rebel player if you're the red team you also decide which list is left over because the list left over here will get paired into the list left over over here let me show you say for example are the red team rebel player decided to play the separatists so the blue team rebel player gets left over we'll put him up there so we've got one of our pairings again in secret that's paired up there the Imperials from the blue team decide that they want to play the scum so the Republic gets left over and left behind so there we go we have these two pairings these guys get revealed and that means that these two remaining lists also get paired up so you end up with the Republic and the rebels playing each other so for the final set of pairings instead of just deciding the two that we have here so we have Imperial against scum there we go and we have rebel against separatist we also end up pairing our republic into our rebel now this introduces quite a lot of mind games into the pairing system because you know that you're going to end up with that final pairing with what's left over maybe you give your opponent a list that they will obviously want to pair into one thing it will give them the opportunity to get their good matchup against that one player but then it's a very obvious list left over so you can possibly counter their remaining squad um, it brings a lot more tactic into it and makes it interesting it's a lot more useful to go through this a couple of times and see how it works um, but that is the pairing system that's the order that's how you do it and hopefully you guys have got a much better idea now about how the pairing system for the XTC works it's a fantastic system there's a lot of nuances in it um, I would really recommend uh, sitting down with one of your friends and doing this a few times just running through the order try and get some of the pairings that you want think about which lists might be best to defenders think about which lists might be best left for attackers either on the first round of attackers or maybe the second round of attackers think about how many weaknesses or strengths your lists have um, if you can do that then you should be able to come out with a good series of matchups and hopefully allow you to have a much better chance of winning your overall round for the XTC. Hopefully that was helpful and see you guys soon. Fly casual.